from Christian House of Faith, CHOF, and on CHOF Ministry Radio, it's Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. Lord beloved, welcome to CHOF Bible Fellowship. I'm Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston Jr., Executive Director of Christian House of Faith, CHOF, and CHOF Ministry. I pray that your time with me will bring you love, joy, peace, wisdom, and knowledge. Beloved, God's plans are always best. And my message for you today is a message designed to help everyone reflect on God's chosen plans for their lives from a biblical perspective. Today's message is entitled, The Best Plans Are God's Plans. And our focal text for this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 through 13. I present to you Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. And the word of God reads in this manner. This is what the Lord says when 70 years are completed for Babylon. I will come to you and fulfill my good promises to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Once again, our morning scripture reads, this is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promises to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Beloved, (laughs) we all have plans for our lives. Each of us would like to accomplish certain things in this life. Mm -hmm. Some of you can see your plans and dreams come to fruition, and, and others of you are still waiting to see the plans, hopes, and dreams unfold in your lives. But there's a message for all of us today. Mm -hmm. Whether we have experienced success in seeing the plans and hopes we have for our lives unfold or if we're still waiting to see those plans, hopes, and dreams become a reality. You see, back in the old biblical times, God used prophets to send messages to God's people. And the messages, they varied depending on upon who the people were and the circumstances surrounding the prophet's visit with the people. So in our passage today, God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah, who's given a word of hope to God's people. Now, the people are not in what could be perceived as the ideal situation at the moment. They have their concerns. They have their desires. They may even be in distress. Some may be even pondering, what will God do for them? But now God assures them that when the time has passed for them to deal with their period of immobility, they will be able to experience a new lifestyle. Now, on the surface, this may not appear to be good news. It may appear to be a deferred announcement for people seeking aid immediately. 
And this could be the issue, but even when God chooses not to respond to our prayers immediately, we can be assured that God will provide what's essential for us. Beloved, we must always keep in mind that God's vision for humanity is far superior to humanity's vision for humanity. Now, my question for you this morning is what hopes do you have for yourself? Some of you may have a general idea, while others may not have a clue as to what they are supposed to be doing in this life. The question of purpose for our life is brought to the top of the list right here. You see, I found that a, a, a good cook has the finished product in mind when he or she begins preparing a meal. I found that an artist, when putting together a drawing or a picture or other craft, at least from a conceptual standpoint, has a good idea about how a piece of artwork will look when it's completed. I've even found that an architect, when preparing a set of drawings for a new project, is capable of knowing how the end product will look. Now, if humanity can function in the way it functions to create a finished product, Surely our God can also. Beloved, what kinds of plans do you think God has for you and your loved ones? What's God's hope for your life? Well, if you don't know, let me tell you. The answer lies right here in verse 11 of Jeremiah chapter 29. Mm -hmm. You see, within this verse, God states that God's plans for God's creation does center around prosperity. It centers around protection. It centers around hope for the future. Beloved, this is good news. Even if you're not experiencing these things today, God assures God's people that these things will take place eventually. Now, some of you may be wondering or even questioning, what about those who are, have never seen to encounter what is listed in this passage? And, and perhaps you know someone who failed to experience prosperity in this lifetime. Instead of experiencing prosperity, they struggled most of their life. Well, from the individual's vantage point, he or she had a hard time relating to God because of their negative experiences they've encountered. Beloved, if you feel this way or are aware of someone who feels this way, I want you to know that all is not lost. God is encouraging the people whom this writing was addressed to pray diligently. Mm -hmm. That's your answer. Pray diligently. Pray earnestly and with persistence. Beloved, if you feel like something is still missing in your life, try to follow the word from the prophet Jeremiah. Pray to God in earnest about your situation. Pray to God in the right mind. Pray to God with seriousness. Pray to God with truth and sincerity as your lead. Beloved, going to God in prayer, you got to be explicit. Lay it all on line with your God. God wants to see you accomplish positive things in life. Now, as we get back to the passage of scripture here, I want to remind you that things may not necessarily happen when we desire them to happen. And they may not happen the way we want them to happen. Still, beloved, God's plans for our lives are always better than the plans we have for ourselves. As the prophet spoke to the people, I'll also reiterate to each of us. God's plans are better than our plans. Beloved, we must be patient until God allows things to come to fruition for our lives. While we wait in expectation, we can still pray on a consistent basis that God will reveal to us what his plans are for our lives.
Beloved, if we truly want to be in God's will and experience the best that God has for us, we must, we must be in constant prayer. Prayer is the answer. Pray with the attitude that God will respond to your prayers in a positive manner in his own time. And continue to strive for the best and include God in every phase of your life. God does have a plan for each of our lives and God's plan is always best. And it's our job to seek God's face and be led by the Spirit as we're directed to follow God's plan for our lives. You know, I like Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And to me, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is very important for each of us to know. And if you acknowledge it every day, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. <laughs> and he will make your path straight. Beloved, it's true prayer that works. And remember, God's plan always, always is the best. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we come to your throne of grace and mercy to receive a heart like Mary's. Lord God, we're willing to agree with your word, your promises, and your intent for our life. You see, we realized with Mary there was no negotiating, no beating around the bush, no making excuses. There was no 24 hours to think about it, no keeping her own option open. You simply spoke and she promptly responded with the word, yes. Lord God, this morning we realize you have an intent for us. We also realize that the purpose you have for us will have its test, its high points and its low points, its joys and sorrows, but your plan is far and above the best plan for our life. Lord God, May our soul be transformed into one that instantly obeys you, comes when you call, follows your lead, and believes your word. Even when we can't fully comprehend it, your word is truth. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, the challenges of life are filled with unique and obscure characteristics for every individual. We must overcome the ambiguous by representing and presenting love to everyone. So today, reach out to someone you love and tell them you love them because telling them later just might be too late. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Please join Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. each Sunday at 7 a.m. here on CHOF Ministry Radio. Come and get your Sunday started by feeding your spirit with a wholesome plate of spiritual food.